Good morning and welcome. Welcome to our Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Um, where I try and bring you some yoga alpha, um, body hacks, however you want to see it. It's uh, you know, finding solutions for, um, for the body and, um, and yoga is my kind of framework. So, um, yes, today I wanted to touch on and possibly even start a series on chakras. <laughs> uh, the, the reason I'm laughing is because um, for most of my kind of adult career, if you like, as a yoga teacher, I've, I've been in avoidance of talking about such things. Um, because I didn't want to, um, I, I didn't want to go against the kind of culture that I was learning my yoga within, which was about, um, avoiding the woo woo, you know, not, not going down blind alleys based on imagination. And, um, yes, a sort of, um, intention to be intelligent, um, uh, and I've stuck to that intention to be intelligent about my practice, but um, uh, I found that dismissing dismissing the kind of the, the long established ideas uh, out of hand simply because it can't be approved in normal kind of scientific scientific methods. Um, <clears throat> normal scientific fashion. I found that to be a little bit unintelligent because, you know, if I, you know, if I don't understand, if just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that it there's not something there. So, and to cut a long story short, the the you know my own approach has veered off from everything that I've been taught because uh, I also stuck to the tenet of what works answering the question what works what do you what do you want to happen and is the thing that you're doing giving you what you wish to happen and if it doesn't then it might be a good idea to change your mind you see so and still trying to cut the long story short that led me to a different approach that that involves a lot more of treating body mechanics as a result of how the human being interacts with the world through through themselves you know who they are as a person how they feel and uh, the measure of that can be experienced physiologically through the through the breath uh, through how someone holds themselves together in a particular situation that sort of thing so my approach has veered off. It's veered off into my own kind of understanding of things. Where, yes, I want to apply an intelligence to be able to solve uh, physical issues for myself and anyone else that wants to work with me. But you can't do that by simply changing, doing stuff to the body because it's the relationship of that person through that body to the world that causes the physical ramifications that they're wanting to change. So I'm not a counsellor. I, 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 don't, I don't want to deal with that. That's not my bag. But what I can do in my own practice and what I can invite others to do is to directly and physically explore how they relate to things like support, the idea of support that you can find from your relationship to the ground, um, the idea of um, support that you can gain from the way that you relate to space, uh, a more understandable way of putting that is if basically if you have structural balance, you will feel supported by the space around you. So if you can engage in a way that looks for that, then you will be doing unfamiliar things with your body if 
you don't already experience that support. So you'll be doing things differently. But you can at least physically get to an experience that is different, but also understandably, recognizably nicer for your body than if you don't involve yourself. Okay? So um, oh, this is meant to be a long story short, and it's a, it's a short story long. <laughs> But um, my, my approach has, has changed from what I was taught. It shifted into a broader thing involving the human being and the body working together and uh, applying intelligence to that understanding that it is the person inside the body that causes the relationships that they're experiencing and, co and causes the things that they wish to change. And uh, if you can experience physically the the a different relationship to the world around you and it's pleasant then you're more likely as a as the person to adopt it as a way of being as a way of moving so take it a bit deeper um this all, this all came from this morning's uh pranayama practice that i did for myself for myself that i do most mornings um we get onto the topic of of chakras now, what, what are chakras? People experience them um, in their own ways. Some people don't experience them because they're looking for something that they recognize as a chakra um, and they have an idea of what that is. You could think of the spaces within you, anywhere, any part, any part of you has space that is contained and may, the, maybe that space is filled with fluid maybe it's filled with something that's a little denser than fluid like an organ only slightly um, but you can think of it all as space on the inside and the time that you experience it as space is when there is not a need to um, hold it together to hold to hold it in place when, when when you feel spacious on the inside it's because there's no internal tensions bracing to keep you where you are in in in, in space to keep you in place basically so on a physical level if you have balance that is through your structure then the deeper muscles the deeper tensions that we normally uh, hold ourselves up with or down with um, don't have to be there because basically you're balancing through bones and that absence of holding leaves you with a sense of internal space so I like to refer to the insides of the body as space so it gives you an idea of what you're looking for any space in your body can be the seat of your operation, where, where you are operating from. So um, an example would be, say you are hungry, okay? And um, you feel hungry and there's nothing much else that's kind of taking your attention. So you, the center of your being will be about hunger and then the rest of you well, you'll make decisions, you'll, you'll think, you'll decide, you'll act in a way that is centred around being hungry. And um, where that hunger is located for you, well, it, it's actually the whole body, you know, um, it'd be to do with blood sugar levels and, and um, yeah, requirements of the body. But where you feel it is probably in the location of your digestive organs. Okay? So if you feel hungry, you are operating from your belly. And you could say, if, 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 if uh, the seat of your hunger was a chakra, you could say that that place um, is, is your hunger chakra, if you like. And being centered in it means that you operate from that perspective as in the need to satisfy hunger. 
it can get confused because of our personal relationship to hunger that we've developed over our lifetimes from um, early age where it's formed to to our entire lifetimes we can associate hunger as relieving other feelings that we wish to um, relieve like um, if you if you feel tired uh, you might associate that with hunger if you feel sad you might associate that with hunger um, you might not you know uh, you might do the opposite but there's a relationship to that central operation that determines whether your hunger chakra is functional or not whether it works appropriately if all that happens is you notice you're hungry and then you eat until you're not hungry anymore and it, and you feel fine you don't feel tired or, or overly full or whatever as a result um, you know you, you feel satisfied and ready to get on you so you no longer need to be operating from hunger uh, if it all works well then then you've got a balanced hunger chakra if it doesn't it will be to do with your relationship to hunger and and your ideas your your associations in the same way that um, my yoga is about getting the person to relate to the world in a way that um, relieves them of the physical symptoms of dysfunctional relationships if you want to if you if you have a, a weight problem or a, or a, if you're anorexic or you know if you have a, a difficult relationship to food then it'll be your relationship to hunger that needs moving around uh, no amount of control will change it it's your personal feelings about and uh, attachments to and relationships with that feeling and if you can get clear about those things, then my guess is the relationship will settle into something more functional. Uh, I don't know of a hunger chakra, but I'm sure it's associated with um, uh, traditional ones on, on some level. But um, you can go deeper than that and bring it back to the yoga understanding. Of um, a lot... I, I, I think it was fair to say that a, a large proportion of people um, these days culturally live in their heads. They are centered in their heads, which in yoga terms is your third eye. And again, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's about yeah, be, being with the agenda of the mind and, and, that sort of, and intuition and that sort of thing. But whether that relationship to the world is from there is functional or not will depend on all sorts of things. Uh, your entire history, <laughs> your, uh, what you think about being in your head. And, and the reason most of us live in our heads is because it's culturally applauded to do so. You know, intellect and intelligence is um, applauded. It's considered... Uh, the most useful thing to develop so we have a, this culture of most of us are living in our heads and that would be fine if it's been an evolutionary process that has taken care of everything along the way so for example I'm speaking to you now so in speaking I'm less in my head than I was when I was working out what I wanted to talk about today I'm more in my throat I'm more I'm more centered in this area and uh, as I'm seeing myself on the screen I'm seeing the way that I'm moving is with my throat at the center of what I'm doing my whole body below and my head above is moving to accommodate the throat being the center of what I'm doing so expression and then, you know, if I was, if I had a dysfunctional relationship to speaking to you about this subject, which I, which I don't, I have dysfunctional relationships about speaking about other things, but about yoga, I'm, I'm, I'm free. So 
I have a healthy feeling around my neck and throat as I speak to you. If I was worried about what I was saying, if I was unsure, if I was worrying about fluffing it or anything else, I would be more defended. I would be kind of held back in what I'm saying. And it's not long before you feel a kind of, you hear a kind of tightness in the voice um, because of that restriction. So I won't do that. <laughs> Um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can, you can um, extrapolate your own kind of understanding of each area. The heart is an obvious one for most people, uh, both culturally and intellectually. Solar, plex solar plexus area, and that's the area I want to deal with today, is another area of interest. The space between the heart and the navel, basically. The... Um, the lower belly, the lower belly is an important area as well. And I, I won't go into the meaning of each of these things. I'll leave you to <clears throat> discern for yourself. And, <clears throat> and, and you can read about it. But my suggestion would be to breathe. And if you want to know what the, this area is about, then take a breath and see if you can send the, the held breath into that area. So the rest of the body will work in a way that brings that breath into that space and kind of fills it slightly. And you want to find support from that from above, so you'll be bearing down with gravity, but you've also got support from below, so the ground is coming up into that area. And um, so it will feel like you're breathing into your... Uh, pelvic floor and you should be able to feel the pressure of that in that space so that, that's the thing you can do take a breath and send it down in into the space that you're interested in make sure there's no retraction from the earth and try and find balance in the rest of the body so that you're not holding yourself up whilst you hold the breath I, uh, <clears throat> i've got used to using a muscle so i can speak and do the same, do that at the same time. But um, the easiest way to do it is to take a breath and bear down as if you're trying to send the breath into the ground underneath you, basically. And then um, when you've got balance above it, just let go. And you'll feel that space emptying and something coming together towards a point in, the, in that space. And when you've released into that place, I would say that you've found your sacral chakra. Now, what it means to you, um, it's obvious. There are, um, it's near your sexual organs, it's near your um, uh, excretory organs. It's, it's going to have relationships to both of those things. And what that means to the person... <laughs> You know, what, what history is behind that the person's relationship to that space will depend on all sorts of things, your entire life history. So learning how, if, for example, it's an area of avoidance, the emptying into that space will be an unusual experience. So if you can empty into that space from what I just gave you, so you take a breath, bear down to fill the space below the navel all the way to the ground underneath your root. Find balance above it so you're not holding yourself anyway. And then let go into that space and let go of everything else, including whatever shape you're making. And if it empties back well and arrives on the ground behind you on the sit back, it should lead to a release away from the ground in the rest of the body. That's, that's a physical thing. But if every breath it has that feeling of that kind of gathered place, it becomes the place you're operating from. So the next breath, you want to drop through that gathered place to your sit bones in order to breathe below it. And that will bring the breath into your root. 
And then when you release that breath, you'll feel something coming up through the root into this place as you release away from the ground. So now we have an established center, the lower belly, around which the whole of you can move. And if you can kind of stay in that center, you'll find it's kind of useful for being up. It's useful for being up and leaving your weight behind you. It's useful for upward thinking. So uh, th this chakra, if you like, uh, the sacral chakra is associated with sexuality but also with creativity. I'll leave you to work that one out. But on a physical level, you can simply experience what it means, to, what it feels like to be centered in that place as you move. So that, that, that was a nice example. Um, how long have I been going for? Let me just check. So I want to do a proper class for my premium members. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, anyway, I'll carry on. Yeah, it, it, it'll be a different experience. And for if you're not used to the breath centering there as you release it, then it'll feel like it's something you have to hold. But being centered there means letting go from there into your ground in order to allow yourself to breathe not breathing into there. Being centered there is when the breath, when you are operating from there, and the breath is something that expresses everything else that you're doing. It's at the center. So it doesn't need to puff up. So if you can drop from that space into your support to breathe, when you release the breath back into that space, you'll you continue being centered in that place. And it's a, it's a mode of operation centered in your sacral chakra. It has advantages. It has disadvantages. It will challenge other parts of you. But um, that's an example. It's not the one I want to center on for this first, quite possibly of a series, and by the way, let me know in the comments if you would like a series of yoga solutions on this topic so I can go through each chakra. Um, if you don't, I'll save it for a course and I'll, I'll do it for um, whoever's interested. And, and you can let me know if you're interested in that as well. But um, the, the area I wanted to deal with is the one I've always felt is kind of the the physical key, if you like, uh, the thing that, uh, that most people suffer from, which is a divide between what is up and what is down. <clears throat> and it's the solar plexus. It's the area between the navel and underneath the heart. Um, so uh, I think this is going to be slightly longer yoga solutions than normal. And I'll, I'll take it further for my premium members. But... Um, what I'd like you to do is to, in order to settle into the, that space that I'm talking about, uh, a sort of V-shape down to the navel, and then the, a dome shape inside your chest with ribs wrapped around that space. If you want to settle into that, you need to be able to relax down. And so I'm not lifting my head so that you don't, but, um, but uh, you might need to look at the screen every now and again. But um, what I'd like you to do is to make sure you could put one hand on your lower front ribs and upper belly with a, you know, a span between your bottom of your breastbone and the navel, that sort of area, and the other hand on the base of the spine, well, on the join between the sacrum and the lumbers. So you put the back of one hand on... on top of your sacrum and you put the palm of your other hand on your middle between the breastbone and the navel and if you rest down 
allowing the belly to drop back that that will allow your your lower back to relax and you'll rest into the hand behind you if you're not holding your head up and you're not hanging heavily down if you're sort of in floating mode relaxing mode from your hand on the front just play with slight lilts in your <clears throat> in your sort of shape and body weight so if you lilt your body weight over to the right whilst your ribs on the left drop that'll make you feel more grounded on the left rib side of the rib cage and this is all with the belly resting back and that that's a function of your <clears throat> lower back not holding your weight up your belly can rest back into the space behind you as you breathe and as you release the breath it will empty more so you kind of uh, um, you drop into this space to breathe and you should find your belly kind of resisting but it's basically support it's not you being tense if you drop your weight into your base to breathe without holding your weight up with your spine you should feel the belly muscles respond to that so that the breath can fill that space between your navel and your heart without you having to puff it up if you hold the breath for a moment oh i forgot to do both sides of the ribs uh, so, sorry about that so if your ribs are feeling lopsided you can try the other thing bring your hand to the right ribs lilt your weight over to the left so that your right ribs can drop take a breath let it go and then your rib cage will kind of come together around it so once again with this kind of down attitude where you're not holding your head up nor hanging your head down you're balanced over through this space that you're holding with your hands between your hands and you let the breath arrive because you let go of your weight through to the base underneath you and into your back hand The result of that will be support. Hold the breath for a moment and just see if you can let go of any holding of yourself down in, the, in everything above your hand. And then let go. Provided you didn't lift at any point, when you let go, the space between the navel and the heart will have emptied and the, as if the breath dissolved into that place. And this, become, this can become your centre of gravity. So, there's, um, so we're looking at the space inside, the space that is contained between the lower half of your rib cage and making a kind of V shape to your navel, uh, <clears throat> behind your navel, into the centre of the lumbar spine. And if every time you let go to breathe through this space, if you're not holding yourself up, this space stays contained. When you release the breath, you dissolve into it. And the centre of that dissolving, if you could imagine the very uh, a three dimensional point, a point within three dimensions of that space, is your centre of gravity. So if you move around, see if you can move around from that place, and you'll find it will be the core and the ribs that do the moving. Now, what would what would this be centering yourself in? Okay, so so it's kind of um, interesting to tune into what is actually in that space, and I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll give you a bit more here. All of this is is a bit, you know, it's a lot of information, but um, I'm hoping hoping it's remaining interesting. So in, in this space that we're trying to quieten, as it quietens, it dissolves inwards. And the arriving breath doesn't puff it out, not because you're tense, but because you're giving your weight from the structures around it down. <clears throat> What's in that space? Well, if you've got both hands on, on your ribcage, 
the underneath your right hand is a chunky chunky old liver that is to do with um, eliminating waste uh, toxins uh, processing and underneath your left hand is like your stomach and your spleen your right hand is gallbladder in in the middle towards the back is your uh, pancreas to do with um, uh, they're related to the adrenals and to do with uh, uh, insulin and sugar and that sort of thing and digestive tract uh, around that as well so something to do with hunger behind you if you slide a hand onto your lower back ribs and give yourself a massage there there's your kidneys so inside this space there's all these vital organs that are performing a function and they are essentially fluid fluid that is contained within a, 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 a flexible structure very flexible very very malleable structure so what happens when you hold yourself up with your spine is those the structure around that containment uh, uh, the structure around it which is kind of contained the natural shape of the organs um, goes away when you lift with your back all the structure around it no longer responds to the ground as you breathe and release the breath so that liver, which is a fluid space, if those ribs come forwards and up because you lift your, your chest with your lower back, if they then splay out because the diaphragms collapse down as a result of you lifting with your back, um, then the, the liver will hang low, lower than it wants to be, and it will spread out. It will still work but it will be under a little bit of stress. It won't work as well. When you can quarten into a, when you can quarten into this solar plexus space between navel and heart, and the structure around it can find support by giving its weight to the ground, so that the breath within it, if you drop to breathe, when you release the breath inwards and allow whatever, happens as a result to happen you're centered in your solar plexus and movement of it, uh, from the earth and in space uh, above it is a result of how you are releasing into that center and um, <clears throat> that functional solar plexus breathing arrangement happens to contain the natural shape and the natural organization of cells and fluid that helps a liver behave like a liver the absence of holding up with your lower back helps your kidneys behave like kidneys um, conversely using your lower back to lift pushes on the adrenal glands so you, you get an adrenal kick by doing that which is often mistaken for energy if the stomach if that organ space that has um, triggers within it that tells you when it's empty if that if if that is contained in its natural size and shape by the way that the body centers in the solar plexus then you won't feel as hungry as if you hold yourself up with giving your stomach more space to expand and all and because of the nature of organs and fluid they expand into whatever space they're given they, they distort which is source of metal age spread essentially etc etc there's this space in here all the way around is so pivotal for our functional health and longevity all our vital organs if they can be cradled in a useful way 
that doesn't involve the stress of holding the mouth, but happens because of the way you breathe, centered in the solar plexus, leads to a different sense of self, because in that integration, there's, a, there's no longer a division between being up and being down. That, that's a, that separation between up and down happens because we lift ourselves away from the ground in this area, or we hang down only from above over this area. If you can get an integrated relationship through this area, where this is solar plexus is your center, where the ribs have settled down around that space, and it's got a confluence through to behind the navel, which allows your lumbar spine to remain relaxed. It crisscrosses through to the ground underneath you. So the way you give weight to your base is through yourself rather than outside of yourself. All of that means that everything above that area can be free in space because you breathe and let go of the breath. So centering in this place that you've decided to cradle and then the action of cradling it, the rib cage and the core, etc., is the thing that you that uses the ground to motivate you in space in harmony with the arriving breath in harmony with the releasing breath you will be moving from your solar plexus it'll feel like a lot of effort if you're not used to it uh, the, the emptying into the center will be an unusual experience but the, uh, the effort of setting it up, which is what happens when you breathe, will seem quite intense. But when you let go into that space and relax your base away from you, as you release away from the ground in space in the upper part of the body, when you let go, essentially, you can let go into what you're doing from the solar plexus center, center of the space between the heart and the navel the central three-dimensional center of that this whole area gosh um that was a long one um i hope it wasn't too subtle for you so that um you lost interest i hope you were able to follow my suggestions uh on yeah i'll let, let, uh, just give you a little a practical um way of thinking of it in no, more normal yoga terms. Well, <laughs> still not normal, but it's um, something I used to say a long time ago that I thought was very handy at the time. If you can rest down through your lower heart, the lower half of your rib cage, and you might need to draw your belly back in order to be able to do so, so that your back can relax. And what you do is you kind of move around, but as if you're stirring your rib cage inside of your pelvis, inside of your pelvis, not outside, inside of your pelvis. And you try and not use your arms and legs to move so that the only thing, so, you know, you don't lift a leg to pull yourself over to one side. You don't push yourself with your arms. So the only thing you have to move you around in space is this effort in the middle of stirring that central point round and round inside your pelvic pole and you can do that to turn if you if you stir anti-clockwise you can use that to turn clockwise if you stir clockwise oops wrong way let's do it again turn clockwise on the inside that will allow the body around it to fall into anti-clockwise turn and uh, you know that way of doing it would have made you more tense but um, might make the feeling more recognizable because it involves effort the 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 key for all of these relationships 
is learning how to relax into them. So once you've done that, once you've played with the thing of stirring the rib cage round inside the pelvis to turn in the opposite direction, once you've done that, find support from your hands. Make sure your base is relaxed. Take a breath by letting go. And see if you can release into the middle of that. And, and in order to release into the middle of that space, you need to drop your base behind you. And you've got a hand there, hopefully, to remind you. As you release into that space, you allow your face to release away from the ground as the front of the base falls away from you. The job is to relax. And the definition of relaxing is not needing to do anything in order to breathe. You let go. And then when you release, if you've, what you let go into has balance, which you can find out by letting go of muscles around your neck and things. And see if you stay put, if you have balance, then when you let go, you can let go into that place. And any surreptitious efforts can be released. If you're doing that to this area, it'll be contrived, it'll be controlled, it'll be jittery. If you can centre in this place, if the place you are operating from is the solar plexus, then from there you have a relationship to the ground beneath you and the space above you as you breathe and as you release the breath. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> Um, I think actually that's enough uh, for both uh, my um, for, for yoga solutions. I, I don't think I need to do any more for um, my premium members. I think that's a good enough range of explorations. It's certainly long enough. Um, if you want more on this subject, please give me some feedback and let me know. Because <clears throat> otherwise, uh, I'll my practice will take me elsewhere and I'll go off on, on other tangents and, and just share with you whatever I happen to be on the time. But this feels significant. I, I, I got some clarity this morning, but um, uh, yeah, it, it, I got some clarity this morning. And uh, if, if it's something that people are interested in, I can hone it a bit further. All right then. So um, yeah, I hope that was useful. I've got a workshop this Saturday, um, tomorrow in fact, um, more than likely I'll be on this theme, but um, depends who turns up and what they would like. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, if I take if I was to take this into a workshop, I would see how it relates to all your favourite postures. You know, what does it feel like to centre in the solar plexus when you have a go at dog pose, when you um, try headstand, or, I, I don't know, whatever you like doesn't really matter what the postures are, but I'd, I'd, I'd keep the theme going and see how it's practically applicable to yoga postures. Um, even more interestingly, how it's applicable to life. So, you know, um, you can use standing postures to work out how to stand. <laughs> you can use sitting postures to work out how to sit. Um, and you can work out how to move between those things centred on this theme of being kind to your middle, you know. Um, or being kind from your middle. Alrighty, uh, that's enough. I, I could go on forever. I could feel myself rambling now because I've got so much more to share. But I, I, th I think that'll do. So come and join me on Saturday if you want to dive deeper on that. Um, other than that, I've got my yoga retreat in Turkey hosted by a Tuesday at Neil in July. That's coming up very soon. Um, if you want to do that, as and there is a, if there's pr provided there's space, I think there is. Um, book soon because the flights will go up in price a lot very soon. Um, that's in July, early July, and then uh, August I'm doing a couple of spots on the World Yoga Festival um, in the UK. So yeah, that'll do. I shall see you soon.
um, and much love. Bye now.